Welcome to the Tony Scott Internet Show, the podcast that I do uh, during the week. We're running late today because of uh, obligations. Let me just be honest, I was not feeling well this morning, so uh, I don't feel too good today. But we're going to get through it today, because why? Because I'm a trooper. (laughs) I'm a trooper. All right, then. Hope your weekend was good. I just like this music. I don't know why. I just, this thing just mesmerizes me. I, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Ferguson, October was in full swing this past weekend. Protesters were at St. Louis University last night. Uh, the killing by police of Von Derrick Myers was just a few blocks from St. Louis University. Now, Saturday at night, I did get some messages from people telling me that the focus Saturday night was kind of lost because uh, it looked more like a block party in the Shaw neighborhood than any kind of protest. But the protests that happened during the day downtown were inspiring, productive. That's a good thing, but I don't know, maybe uh, maybe the young people just needed to let off some steam and just decided to, you know, just let it down. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You know, I did see a tweet. Someone said that uh, addressing the old heads like myself, this ain't your parents. This ain't your parents. Uh, civil rights thing. This is this is ours, which I've told people for a while now maybe even told you that, you know, young people look at things differently today. They don't want to hear, well, here's what we did back in the 60s. They don't want to hear that. They, that's not, that doesn't interest them. They want to make their own mistakes. They want to do things their way. And if you don't want to be part of that, then you need to go start your own thing, I think is what their message is. And I can respect that. I don't necessarily agree with it. I think there's always something to learn from people who've been down similar paths. But if that's what they want to do, what else can you do but respect it? I'm not going to condemn it. I was, was I disappointed that it seemed like it was like a block party Saturday night more than a protest? Yeah, a little bit, but I don't think it was like a complete block party. I just think there were probably pockets where people were dan- dancing and music and stuff like that and maybe losing focus a little, but, you know, they're kids. What are you going to do? Now, on the other side, Darren Wilson supporters have taken to selling T-shirts that seem to imply that they have the Cardinals support, the baseball Cardinals uh, I'll put the pictures up on the news page at Talking360.com. Now, if I were the Cardinals, I'd have my lawyers looking into that because I would just want to stay out of the whole thing until a decision is made by the grand jury. I would not want Cardinals or anything that implies that the Cardinals are supporting whoever to be uh, made into T-shirts. I would really be looking into that. Today's being called Moral Monday. Last night's interfaith service at the Chaffetz area uh, arena at uh, St. Louis University uh, had speakers, inspirational speakers. Cor- Cornel West was down there, who told people that he didn't come for meetings; he came to get arrested. He came to protest. I think was his message. Now I don't know over the weekend if you uh, caught the interview that Michael Brown Sr. did with the uh, Tremaine Lee over at MSNBC. There's a whole lot on my back now. You know, uh, it's a situation where I'm. I'm not going to never heal in the inside. You know, uh, I can get by maybe day by day. Uh, people probably look and see, maybe probably think that I'm doing okay and really not. But you know, it's just something I have to work on. We have a lot of support and I have to be strong for other people too. You can hear the pain in his voice. You, you, can, you can hear it. I, I have never lost a child. God forbid that never happened. I, I, so I cannot even imagine what Mr. Brown Sr. is going through. Cannot even in my mind. I have lost a parent. And I can tell you that that's a hole that will always be there. And you live off the great memories. And you do things like that. But losing a child, I'm not even going to begin to try and interpret what this man is feeling. Not even begin. I just cannot imagine what he's going through. I mean, it's one thing to lose a child you know, in an accident because of, you know, a car accident, an illness or something like that. But when your child is shot dead in the street and he really wasn't, you know, wasn't armed, you know, uh, might he been like misbehaving? Um, yeah, but did it, did it amount to being murdered in the street by a police officer? Hell no, no. I cannot imagine what that feels like. And to, and to try and say, you know, I understand what you're going through would be an insult to both Mike Brown Sr. and Leslie McSpadden, Michael Brown Jr.'s mother. 
and their entire family. I cannot begin to to explain to you just how important it is that we that we not try and interpret Michael Brown or Leslie McSpadden's feelings. I think it's it's it would just a it would be just rude and disrespectful because I just cannot imagine everybody deals with everything in a different way and he's doing the best that he can. You can hear the pain in his voice and my heart aches for him because like I said, I cannot imagine what that's about. You know, it's interesting how people perceive different things about these uh, protests that are going on around St. Louis, as some people say they're troublemakers and they're trying to capitalize. Look, every group of people is going to have people who don't have the best intentions. We have family members that we're ashamed of. I can tell you that. I told you that last week. I had a couple of cousins who got locked up just a couple of weeks ago for doing some stupid stuff down in Texas. And they got to get their pictures on TV. Oh, we're so proud. I mean, come on. I mean, we all have that. And so in any group, there's going to be people who are who are going to hang on to a group just so they can get their agenda pushed. We, we, we get that. By and far, the folks that are protesting have genuine pain, have had enough, have had just, they've had their fill of disrespect by the police department and, and, by, and by government. Enough is enough. Lip service. I've said this all along. The only time you see white politicians go to black churches is when, is when they need your vote. Once they have your vote, they don't even have time to come out of their office and talk to you if you visit them. I've always said that. I've always wondered why, and, and I'm guilty of this too. I see a Republican, and I'm looking at MC. Are they really racist? That's, I mean, I'm just being honest. That's the first thing I think about. But what have Democratic politicians done for the black community or communities of color? What they say they're going to do when they visit our churches to say, I'm going to I'm going to see to it that we get these guns off the street. I'm going to see to it that we do this, that and the other. And then once they're they're reelected, they don't even have time for you. Talk to the hand. Talk to my aide. Talk to my aide's intern. Ah, ah, to me. And we're at a point now where we just need to vote for the people who have our best interests at heart. Who, who's the person who has who you agree with the most, not just because they're affiliated with one party. Who's going to get it done? And if they don't get it done, then you vote for someone else next time. But the, it all comes down. Everything all comes down to us getting more involved in the decision making process. And that starts with voting our elected officials in and voting our elected officials out. I mean, it's pretty simple, I think. Man, over the weekend, a, a nurse at that same Texas hospital that treated Thomas Eric Duncan for Ebola herself has contracted Ebola and she's being called the first known transmission of Ebola in the United States. So now she's apparently she did all the right things. She wore masks, she wore gown, she wore gloves, she wore shield. The CDC says the CDC says there was a breach in protocol. That's what they're saying. But no one knows what that means. What does that mean? It was a breach in protocol. The nurse has been interviewed by the CDC several times and they say that there are several inconsistencies in what she wore and how she put everything on, and how she took it off. See, my thinking is this. I don't know if these healthcare workers know exactly what they're doing. Are they being told they, ha they have to follow everything to the letter? Every precaution, every protocol has to be followed to the letter without exception. Is that being stressed? Now, the largest nursing organization, National Nurses United, they surveyed 2,000 members, and like three-quarters of them said the hospital hasn't communicated any policy about how to admit an Ebola-infected patient. Did you hear me? Three-quarters of them said the hospital ain't said nothing about that. 85% said their hospital hasn't provided education on Ebola, where the nurses can interact and ask questions. They haven't even had a sit-down to talk about this. A mandatory meeting to talk about, you know, it's very real. And let's be honest, let's not, well, first of all, let's not send anybody to a panic, but let's be real. O Ebola is in our country. And whether you're, you're, you're living in Washington, D.C. or one of those cities where those five airports are that they're going to start, you know, monitoring uh, incoming flights. Or you live in Des Moines. Or St. Louis. Or Paducah. It's a real thing. And nurses need to be brought up to speed because, you know, once you get in this country, there ain't no telling where people are going to go. There's some NBC 
person who violated protocol. She's walking the streets of New York right now. Did you hear about that? She violated protocol that were protocols that were set in motion, I think, overseas. And she's back in this country walking around. <laughs> hey, want to get an espresso? You know, I mean, really? So we we need to be educating healthcare workers on all levels everywhere that they need they need this information. It's life or death, not only for them but for us. There's a teacher in Minnesota who's accused of having sex with a student and may be pregnant with that student's child. Mary Gillis is 28 years old. She's charged with six counts of sexual abuse. Bail. Here's the part. I don't, it must be a state thing. Maybe I, I don't pay attention to bail because I'm never, I never need it. Thank God. But bail is $60,000 with no conditions or $6,000 with conditions. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> what, what, okay, $60,000, you can contact a kid. There's no conditions. You can go sleep with them again. I mean, you can do what you want to do. Or $6,000, you can't go nowhere near this child, and you got to do this, that, and the other. Is that, is that what that means? It sounds like that's what it means, but please tell me that's not true. Now, she's looking at these six counts. Every count carries a possibility of 15 years. So what's that? Uh, 20, 30, 30, 60, was that 90 years possibly? Which will more than likely run... Uh, concurrently, which means if she got convicted on all six counts, she would just do 15 years because it'd be 15 years and they'd all like run together as opposed to running one after the other. That would be consecutively. But there has to be some mandatory time for this. I mean, hard time. There has, we have to, we talk about mandatory minimums. When crimes like this, this needs to happen. I mean, really, when you, this, this thing has gotten out of hand. I mean, it has. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I told you about the, the two teachers who had a threesome with one student. And then I come to find out later that they, they had a threesome with him. Both of them, I think, are married. One and got recorded. And they had the threesome in one of the women's uh, bed that she shares with her husband. You've got to do time for this. There has to be a mandatory thing for this. This has to stop. This, this, has, this is crazy. I, I don't I don't understand. I, me don't understand. I don't get this at all. Remember years ago, the woman, the judge didn't put her in jail because she was too good looking. What the hell was that? <laughs> what, 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 you, what is that? You mean because I, I ain't I'm not, you know, I'm not Denzel or or Tom Selleck or whoever. I'm not I'm not good looking. So uh, I, I got to go to jail because I don't look like them. Talk about discrimination. Explain to me where that's for the greater good. I don't get that at all. Hey, the Cardinals last night played a thriller at Bush Stadium, and they won an extra innings five to four. They had home runs in the in in the seventh inning, uh, but they had four home runs. And a little Colton Wong hit a walk off home. When he hit the ball, the game was over. I mean, you could just tell it was gone. The way it jumped off the bat, it was just gone. Now. They're off today traveling to uh, San Francisco to continue the series. It'll be three games there, and then the last two, if they're needed, will be here in St. Louis. But uh, I believe they've got a day game scheduled for tomorrow. So, And uh, we'll be without Yadier Molina. Yadi apparently, uh, I don't know if he pulled or strained. I know he has an oblique injury, which is, you know, like on the side, which when you swing the bat or and when you do any kind of sports, you know, we got to move around. That's, that's, that's a tough thing. I mean, he hit the ball. He couldn't even run. He had to stop. As soon as he hit the ball, he just took, I think he took one, maybe two steps, and he stopped, and he couldn't run. They had to help him off the field. And the Cardinals are kind of in a predicament because when, you, when you're in baseball, you're allowed 25 players on your team. And in the, you know, usually during the season, one gets hurt, you call one up from the minor leagues to take his place until that person is healed up, right? And in the playoffs, though, if they replace Yachty with another player, then he cannot even play. If the Cardinals make it to the World Series, he can't play. Yachty wouldn't be able to play if they replace him on the roster right now. So, if he's and they don't know right now if he's going to be able to come back in time for the World Series. They don't know. But if they replace him, then he cannot come back. If, if he can come back, he has to stay on the roster, but then the Cardinals have to play one player short the rest of the way. That don't really seem fair, but that's the rule. I don't like that rule. <laughs> In Kansas City, the Royals, this might be their year, y'all. 
I mean, the Royals hadn't sniffed the playoffs in 29 years, and here they are, two games up on Baltimore, which Baltimore was a beast this season in baseball, and they, they are two games away from going to the World Series. Uh, 49ers and the Rams tonight here in St. Louis downtown for Monday Night Football. The Rams are going to wear their 99 throwbacks the year they won a Super Bowl. Jeff Fisher, who's a coach of the Rams, may, must not like those uniforms. Those are the uniforms that he lost to when he was head coach of the uh, Tennessee Titans. But kickoff's at 7.30. It'll be on ESPN. And locally in St. Louis, it'll be on Channel 11 for those who don't have cable, which I think is a, one of the, one of, a great thing that the NFL does is that on a game like that, Monday Night Football and stuff, if the home team has to find a local outlet to broadcast the game for people who don't have cable. That is really cool. I, I really like that rule. Uh, the quarterback of the 49ers, though, Colin Kaepernick, he got fined $10,000 for wearing Beats headphones instead of Bose. I told you last week that Bose cut a deal with the NFL to be the exclusive headphone provider of the National Football League, I guess. And so the NFL told everybody who draws a check from the NFL, anybody who plays in the NFL, you cannot be seen on camera wearing bows. I mean, how much more clear does that have to be? But he wore the post-game press conference. He had on some pink beats, uh, I guess in honor of Breast Cancer Month, and uh, they, they fined him $10,000. Now, he won't say if Beats is paying the fine for him, but, you know, come on, man. <laughs> come on. Come on. You agree. When you sign your contract with the NFL, you agree to follow what they say. I mean, you're getting paid an obscene amount of money. Take the damn beats off. Put on some pink bows. I mean, come on, man. Bows can't make pink headphones? Speaking of uh, the NFL, you know, the NFL owners are toying with the idea about stripping teams of draft picks for players that violate their personal conduct policy. So now they want to hold teams accountable by taking draft picks from them, which I think is a good idea. You know what would be an even better idea is, and I don't know how, it would be open for interpretation, so it's probably going to get, they're probably going to get it wrong if they were to do this, and I know they won't. But was it a couple weeks ago, was it not this past weekend, but the weekend before during an NFL game, and I forget which teams that were involved, but one player uh, gave another player a chop block, which is illegal. And now this person who got the chop block, that's where they cut their legs out from on you a, a certain way that you're not allowed to do it. Well, he did it the exact way they tell you not to do it. And it's a 15-yard penalty. But bigger than that, now this player is injured and won't be able to play. I don't know for how long, if it's for the season or a month or I don't know what it is. But to me, if you did that, then that person who did that cannot play until that player can come back. You see what I'm saying? You shouldn't be able to come back and you shouldn't be able to play until the player that, that you intentionally hurt can come back. Now, injuries happen. I guess that's why I said it's open for interpretation. That's why they'll never pass this rule. But it seems like it would be only fair that if you injured him on purpose, you can't play either until they're ready to come back. What do you think? <laughs> I've got some uh, celebrity news and a couple of crazy ass stories to tell you about coming up next on the Tony Scott Internet Show. Do you want to reach an audience that you haven't tapped into yet and not blow your budget? The Tony Scott Internet Show is new, growing, and available to you. Advertising on the Tony Scott Internet Show is extremely affordable. Contact us at advertise at TonyScottShow.com. All right, we're back on the Tony Scott Internet Show, the Monday edition. Yes, it's true. We're running a little bit late, but, you know. I wasn't feeling good. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about Chris Brown and how he's got uh, religious folks all lathered up. I'll tell you about that in a second. But uh, Ray J, who is one of the uh, principals on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, which is just a god awful show, but apparently him and his girl Princess have broken up. And apparently they had four dogs and he apparently is holding one hostage for whatever reason. Ray J, grow up, man. You know, you know, I posted a video of him and Brandy having lunch where something happened on Love and Hip Hop where he said he had to have revenge on his ex-girlfriend, girlfriend, Tierra Marie, who, by the way, is a beautiful girl, but is so hateful just because of her ways. Just grow the hell up. And, you know, stop. Stop with the ratchetness and the cussing and all that stuff like that. That's just, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Brandy got on him and says, man, 
Sometimes I can't believe we have the same mom and dad, man. Grow up. You know? And here he is, his girlfriend, Princess. They broke up, and now he's holding the dog back. And she says the other three dogs are taking it really bad. Uh, especially one of them cries every night because they want Bugatti back in camp. Well, you know what? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> just, hey, Ray J, give her the damn dog back. When I have to be the voice of reason, <laughs> we're in trouble, man. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. Chris Brown is catching some heat. I don't know if you heard about this, but Chris Brown thought it would be fun <laughs> to... to uh, post a picture of his face merged onto an image of Jesus so it kind of looks like, you know, he's Jesus. He thought it'd be fun to do, but he's getting heated up for that. He got, he's being called words and he's just, it's just a picture, people. Aren't we all made in God's image? Is that not the same thing? Come on, man. Come on, people. Snap out of it. Speaking of Chris Brown, the Soul Train nominations uh, were announced, and he's up for like seven of them, including Best R&B Soul Male Artist and Song of the Year for Loyal. Beyonce's got six nominations, and Pharrell has five. So congratulations to all. There's a man in Ohio who is, he's in prison. He's been in prison for like 20 years. Did you hear about him? And he's petitioned for an early release so he can watch LeBron play for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Jason Goodlock is a 39-year-old man who's served more than 20 years for aggravated robbery. And he's trying anything, anything to get out. He wants to watch him in his beloved hometown of Cleveland. He's uh, been in front of the Pro Board five times. They ain't buying what he's selling uh, because he's been locked up since 1994. And he may not get out if he's unsuccessful Going in front of the board this month, he could be in prison until 2028, which will make his sentence 34 years. He's saying, I'm not a career criminal. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, good luck with that, man. <laughs> good, really good luck with that. Hey, if you're thinking about getting a new tattoo, ladies, uh, the most attractive places on a woman's body to get a tattoo is said to be the cleavage. The cleavage is number one. Not, not, not a boob. But the in between, the cleavage is said to be the the hottest place for a woman to put a tattoo. I disagree. I think the hottest place for a woman to put a tattoo is on, on somebody else's body. I'm not I'm not now I'm not tattoo guy, but I have a tattoo and it's the, like one of the biggest mistakes I ever made because it serves no purpose. It doesn't serve a purpose at all. It doesn't do it doesn't do anything. You know, it just doesn't do a damn thing. So, but other places are the back of the shoulder is considered sexy. The inner wrist is considered sexy. How about the hip? The hip is considered sexy. Uh, The ankle is also considered sexy. And the collarbone behind the ear. How about that one? Can we go behind the ear? How about the inner arm is considered pretty hot in some circles. The back of the neck. Remember when Britney Spears did that? And it was some kind of... uh, Chinese or Japanese thing and she it wasn't what she wanted back there in that language how about uh, the spine or the ribs or the front shoulder or the feet said to be kind of hot in a way the lower back the tramp stamp is uh, 14th out of 15 actually 15 out of 15 so there you go but the cleavage not the boob but the cleavage is number one. My tattoo is of a tiger, and it just doesn't make, it just was stupid. I don't know why I did it. Maybe because my dad had one. Uh, but uh, he had a woman of a bikini on his on his forearm that he did back in, he said, like in the 40s or something. So, <laughs> but, but, and it wasn't a very good job, I must say. But, I don't know. I should have done it because, it, like I said, it serves no purpose at all. And it was a waste of money. Don't waste your money. Learn from your Uncle Tony, would you? Do you mind learning from your Uncle Tony? You know what else you, what you want to learn, too, is... Uh, have you ever heard of a fecal transplant? Apparently, this can be life-saving for people who have, like, really tough bacterial infections. And having a fecal transplant, it sounds gross, and it, and it kind of is gross, because basically what you're doing is putting other people's crap... I'm not going to take your crap. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. They would... Deliver the fecal transplant through a tube 
snake down the nose and into the stomach and it delivered healthy bugs, but that ain't a whole lot of fun. So they come up with the frozen poop pill. It's not nearly as evasive, nearly as gross. I mean, who wants crap in a tube shoved up their nose and through their stomach? Nobody wants that. So they've come up with frozen poop and they say so far the results are pretty promising. People suffering from, let me see if I can get it right. Some kind of, I'm not even going to try, but it's Clostridium difficile. And I'm sure I got that wrong. It's debilitating diarrhea. And the bug often defies antibiotics. And they said a fecal transplant will restore good, uh, good gut bacteria that banishes the what they call C. diff. But the procedure is awkward because you got to have fresh feces, usually from a relative, and a colonoscopy to deliver it. In some cases, so the poop pill. If it's going to clear it up, and I ain't got to taste it, can you imagine the aftertaste of that? What? My breath smells like what? No. But you see that would be sick forever. Pick your poison, huh? That's horrible. Yeesh. <laughs> Man, I'm not taking your crap. <laughs> oh, yeah. You say that now. <laughs> That's horrible. We'll leave it right there for today. Uh, thanks so much for listening and for sharing and for reposting and for your continued support. It means the world to me. It really does, all right? Uh, you can check out other episodes of the Tony Scott Internet Show. I got a playlist on YouTube. If it's audio only, you can just listen to it to your heart's content. I'll put a link to that in the show notes today. And I will see you, well, I won't see you, but I will talk to you tomorrow. All right. Have a great Monday.